Hey y'all, what's going on? This is Jackie Marie, and today I am making a video titled The Value That Unit Secretaries Bring to a Hospital. And um, I just wanted to make this video because, um, you know, I be watching stuff. <laughs> I watch stuff in, in the news and things like that. And I pay attention to a lot of uh, health facilities that are laying off. I mean, there's a lot that are laying off. And one of the first to always go is the administration. So it's like department. So like the x-ray department, though, you know, those type of departments, then they look at secretaries. I don't know how many times I'll, I'll probably mm, maybe about two or three times at the hospital. They called in like the hospital called, they brought in like a, a outside company to go over the money you know, where they can save money. And always one of the suggestions were was to get rid of the secretaries. So at first it was to get rid of the night secretaries. And the nurses raised hell, okay? I don't remember what it was the first time. Uh, it might have been to get rid of some of the secretaries, but not all. But then again, it came back around because they called him in a few times and it was to get rid of, the, rid of the night secretaries, like saying you don't need night secretaries. Now, the facility that my mom works at, because my mom is a nurse, they don't have night secretaries. Like, I think they literally have one for the whole hospital. And I think all they do is is admissions. I, I don't even understand how, how you have a hospital. But anyway, that's just me. Because they always, you know, call the secretary to come do it. I don't know. It was weird the way my mom explained it. So I'm like, how do you have a, a medical facility only one secretary? And so they always say, well, the the nurse can do things. So like if you talk, if you think about the night shift, because night shift has a lot of downtime because. I mean, that, that's what you think, you know. Uh, my mom tells stories. My mom works night shift. She tells stories all the time. I'm like, when do these people go to sleep? Okay, when it? Because night shift, the patients are not. It's it's weird, you know, because you have um, you know, you have people go to go to sleep, but it's hard to sleep in the hospital. So it's not like an eight hour sleep like you sleep at night, because it's hard to sleep in the hospital. One, that's that's not your home, and then two, you you hear everything, even with the door closed you hear stuff, you know, it's, it's just hard to sleep in the hospital. You got the call light going off. You got the phones ringing. You got um, lab coming in. You got them coming in to take, you know, take your vitals and things like that. So the patients never really get a lot of sleep. So it's, it's not, I mean, yeah, you have more downtime than you do during the day shift, but it's still not the same. And so they want to put the, the administration part off on the secretary. And so that's why they always say, well, you know, get rid of the night secretary, keep the day shift. Because I think at my mom's hospital, they do have day shift secretaries. They just don't have night shift, which is weird. But I, I don't think, and of course, like I said, the nurses raise holy hell because they ain't dealing with it. So, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't really think that the medical facilities really take into account as to what secretaries do until you don't have them. The nurses know what the secretaries do, but the administration, they don't because all they're looking at is money. They're just looking at the bottom line. They're just looking at the dollar. Like, that's all they're looking at. And they're like, oh, we, we can get, you know, so-and-so to do this. You know what I'm saying? We can get the nurses to do this. We can get the charge nurse to do this. It don't work that way. And that's why, that's why you have a lot of um, places where they have the CNAs. The CNAs are also the secretaries. And they call them pucks. So it's like PCA slash huck. So they're called puck, P H U C. And um, and they you might have them for like smaller units. So like you might have them for the NICU, ICU, things like that. You you'll have a CNA slash uh, or PCA slash huck, which is a called a puck. So they do both. Um, you will have that. So, but. Even then, they still try to get like on units where you don't where you don't have that because you really need a secretary. Like the CNA need to do the CNA's job, and the secretaries need to see the secretary's job when they try to get rid of that. Because like, let's think about it. 
at the hospital, they were trying to get rid of the night secretaries, right? So who was going to do that job? You really, I mean, the nurses, the, the, the CNAs and the nurses, like, no, it don't work that way. So, um, you know, I just don't think that a lot of places really, really fully understand the job that secretaries do. <laughs> like secretaries keep the hospitals running and they keep them running smoothly and they keep it, they just keep it flowing. And I really don't think they, they, they truly understand the impact. Everyone who works with secretaries understand it. Now, do you have lazy secretaries? Yeah, you do. But for the most part, they keep it. They keep it flowing. That's the entire reason why secretaries were created because back during like Civil War, I'm not Civil War, <laughs> World War uh, Two, you know, the doctors and the nurses did everything, and to free up the doctors and the nurses, that's where the secretaries came from. That's that's exactly where they came from. And so, you know, the, just just having secretaries in the facility at all, it. It helps the doctors, it helps the nurse, it, it reduces the stress level for everybody, for the staff, for the patient. Who is going to, if, if you, like my thing always goes back to if it's a cold. If it's a cold and, and all the nurses are running into the room, who is answering? I mean, you still got other patients, right? So if room uh, 203 is coding and everybody's running that way, you still got other patients. You still got phones ringing. You still got dietary that wants to know, um, you know, is so-and-so coming back? You still got housekeeping. Um, is is this one coming back from procedure or are they being trans? Like, you still, you know what I'm saying? You still got a lot of stuff going on. And a cold, a cold can literally last an hour from the time that cold is called to the time is not, is done. You know, people start leaving. It depends on what's going on. Like, I don't know. I just really don't think these. I really don't think these facilities really take in, into account what secretaries do. You know, it, it, they think it's just answering the phone. That's that's like a big pet peeve of mine. That all secretaries do is answer the phone. They do way more than that. Like they keep the units running, which in turn keeps the hospitals running. Secretaries know what forms need to be filled out. They know what the forms are. One of the things, so in the ICU, because um, we had we we had two ICUs. We had the main one, and then we had the one, the the one um, the cardiovascular ICU. That's where I, that's where I was. And so the intensivists set they worked out of the main ICU because that was the main part of the hospital. I was in a separate hospital. It was connected, but it was just separate. And so for whatever reason, we never got the intensivist list. So they would make a list like the calendar and show what intensivist is on call. Cause you had, you know, one, you know, so the way they did it is they would do like Sunday through Thursday, Dr. So-and-so is on call 7A to 7P. And then Sunday through Thursday, doctor, whoever is on call, um, 7P to 7A, or it could be Dr. So-and-so is on call 24 hours for these three days. It just all depends on how they did it. Cause they, some of them worked at other, other facilities as well as intensivists. And so whatever reason, we never got the calendar and I could never figure out how to go in the system and get it. I don't know where they was getting it from. My name was changed password or something because I could never get it. So what I will always do or what we will always do is we will call over to the main ICU and say, hey, can you fax us a copy of the the schedule, the intensive schedule? Now, when I will call over there, I will call over there and whoever answered the phone, I will say, are you the secretary? And if it was, then I would say, okay, hey, this is Jackie. I'm in, you know, the CBICU. Can you fax us a copy of the intensivist schedule, you know, the calendar? And then, you know, give them the fax number or whatever, because I think it might be a program, but anyway, just give them, you know, a fax number. And they send it over. But the reason why I always ask when I called over there, are you the secretary? Because ain't, ain't nobody got time to be repeating and like, I don't want to talk to you because I know I already know you don't know where nothing is. OK, you know, because if it's the nurse to answer, because the one part, the nurse is always answered because they got used to working without a secretary. Well, let, let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. They had a secretary. 
but so so the way their IC was, it was like three sides. It was this part. It was like the um, the PCU. It was the SIU stuff. I don't know. They had three different departments, right? But the secretary always sat on one side, and the 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 lines were different. So you would call this number for this department. And then this number for this department, even though they're all the same, there there is one secretary for that whole unit. They had different numbers. And so when even when I would float over there, I was like, do you want me to forward those calls to me so I can get those calls? So because I'm gonna sit here and they just literally like right through the door. Let me forward those calls here so I can answer all the calls. They're like, no. <laughs> they're like, whatever, whatever. You know what? Why why won't you let the secretary answer the calls? It's weird. They weird over there anyway. So depending on who I call, I didn't know if they had a secretary or not. So that's why I, always, I will always ask, are you the secretary? Because I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> okay. Because y'all weird. Y'all weird anyway. Because why would you why would you rev, why would you not let the secretary answer the calls? Like you want the calls ring into you back there and you got these people intubated and you, I don't know it, it, they was weird but um it was weird the way it was set up so I just want to know are you the secretary because the secretary knows what I'm talking about and they're gonna get it right over here to me you know what I'm saying they're gonna find it they know where it's at because they, they the ones that printed it out they know how to they know where they got the copy they got a copy they're gonna fax it over to me and everybody's gonna be happy I ain't got time to be explaining to you what I'm looking for it might be over here it might be on that. I ain't got time for that. So I want to speak to the secretary because the secretary really, really knows what's going on on the unit as far as the documents, where they are, where they should go, what needs to be filled out. They understand. So that was one of the things I always did. And I, and I usually did that when I called other, other floors as well. I was like, are you the secretary? Whoever answered the phone, are you the secretary? Because I don't want to talk to nobody else. Don't know. I ain't got time. Okay. I ain't got time. Because I can come over there quicker and get it and find it myself than if I, you know what I'm saying? Then if I'm trying to tell you what I'm looking for and you don't, you know what I'm saying? Because like the one, look, nurses float all the time. Nurses float to other units all the time. And they be answering from, you don't know where, you don't know where everybody keep everything, you know? So they just might be over there for the day. They don't know what nothing is. So that's why I always wanted to speak to the secretary. They know what's going on. They know where the forms are. And I just really don't think that a lot of these facilities take into account to the job that secretaries do and how we keep things flowing. I just I just don't. I don't think they they do. I think that secretaries are the most overlooked person in in the facility. I, I mean, I just I just think it is like that. I don't know what could be done to change it. I don't know, cause even cause even when you look at like TV shows with like medical TV shows, I really don't watch medical TV shows. I don't know, I like, I, I no, I, I really don't. But do they do they highlight the secretary? Would you even know they had a secretary on the show? They it's the doctors and the nurses, like and 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 administration, <laughs> like they're like. Who's the secretary? Like, is there, you know what I'm saying? Like, is there a secretary? You would never know because they don't highlight them. They highlight the the residents. They highlight the the x-ray, the the medical examiner, the lab tech. No secretary. None. So um, I think that's the reason why I don't watch. Because at least, at least, you know, at least shows. But then again, hell, I don't think they even show um, CNAs either. I don't think they show CNAs. I don't think they show housekeeping. Like what really, what really, really, really makes a you know a hospital flow. I really don't think they show it. Now hospitals do have all that drama. Okay, now that is that is true. Now they got that they got that drama. But yeah, I, I think that um, secretaries. You know, I, I think a lot of hospitals just don't see the benefit of having a unit secretary and and that's to their their detriment but you know they'll find out the hard way <laughs> i i think our allies our biggest allies are the nurses when it's really said all said and done our biggest allies are the nurses because they that's who we work with that's who we work with when we go to work we work with the nurses the most and they know what needs to be done and 
could some of them do it you know certain things yeah but why <laughs> why you know so i think our biggest allies are are the nurses but uh yeah that's all i got for you you know I, it's just I just always felt this way, you know, I just wanted to make a video talking about it because I just, I just don't think, think we're appreciated enough. But if you have any questions or comments, you can put them below and uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.